Welcome to Euro Bangla City SATV News. This is Shibala Alam with our headlines. Bangladesh Railway has yet to decide when trains will start carrying passengers at half capacity. Meeting on issue to be held soon, said Railway Minister. All bodies have been found when missing after trawler capsized in Narangonj Thalashiri River. UNICEF have expressed grief and support in statement regarding the fire broke out in Rohingya camp in Cox's Bazar. Railway Minister Mohammad Nurul Islam Shujan has said that the Bangladesh Railway has yet to decide when trains will start carrying passengers at half capacity in line with the recently imposed restrictions on public transport. It will not be possible for trains to start operating at 50% capacity from Thursday as tickets for the date have already been sold in advance. The minister said this at an event at Railway Bhavan in Dhaka on Tuesday. Shujan said a meeting will be held on the issue soon. The cabinet division on Monday issued a notification with 11-point directive restricting public movement from Thursday. Buses launches, trains must operate at half capacity and driver as well as the assistants must have COVID-19 vaccination certificates. The authorities have found the body of the 10th and final person who went missing after trawler capsized in Narangonja's Dhalashuri River last week. Divers recovered the body of 14-month-old from the river near the Boktaboli terminal in Fotulla today. Fire service said that the body was later handed over to her family. The 10 has gone missing after the trawler hit by the launch MV Farhan 6 capsized in the Dhalashuri River on January 5th. Reckless navigation and an uncontrolled increase in the number of vessels on waterways had led to collision and have been the leading cause of water accidents in the country since 2005. The U.S. has expressed grief and support in a statement regarding the fire that broke out in a Rohingya camp in Cox's Bazar on January 9. Bangladesh representative of UNICEF, Sheldon Yet said UNICEF is deeply grieved and stands in support of the thousands of Rohingya refugees affected by the fire. The fire that swept across Camp 16 burned down 300 shelters and damaged another 500. The host community near the camp was affected as well. Two UNICEF support learning centers for Rohingya refugee children and almost 200 wash facilities were damaged. UNICEF and partner organizations have been working on the ground since Sunday evening to ensure the immediate and urgent needs of children and families. This includes food, water, sanitation, clothing and shelter materials for the affected families who have lost their belongings into the fire. Yet said their concern now is to ensure the safety, security and protection of children who have been displaced from the shelters due to the fire and avoid other potential risk at the time of the crisis. The mass communication of Narangon to City Corporation election is going on through counter allegation and debates. Independent mayoral candidate advocate Taimur Alam Khandagar alleged at a news conference that the election commission and the police were constructing their activities. His leaders and activists were arrested without any reason, he adds. Later, he started campaigning in 12 words of the city. Meanwhile, the Army League nominated mayoral candidate Selena Hayat Ivy conducted mass mobilization in Mission Para, Chashara and Kanpur areas in Ward No. 12. She alleged that the rival candidates were spreading propaganda out of jealousy. We are taking a short break. Stay with Eurobangla City as a TV news. Welcome back. You're watching Eurobanga City SETV News. Now, international news. 
The U.S. and Russia made little progress on Monday, narrowing the differences during their highly anticipated security talks in Geneva. Despite huddling together for nearly eight hours, the two countries remain far from reaching an agreement on each other's security concern. During the talks, which Russian officials described as difficult, long, but very professional, they underscored Russia has no plans to invade Ukraine. Russia's deputy foreign minister also said that despite Moscow highlighting the need to see some flexibility from NATO. The U.S. did not provide such an assurance. U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman stressed that no one will be allowed to undermine NATO's open-door policy, adding Washington will not forgo bilateral cooperation with countries that want to work with the U.S. Both sides remain pessimistic on our expectations for a diplomatic breakthrough. The U.S. said it was eight hours of discussion rather than a negotiations. After the worst violence in independent Kazakhstan 30-year history, the situation across the country continues to be calm. The country's National Security Committee said Monday that extremist groups had been in hand in nationwide riots, adding it continues its search and will arrest those who joined the riots and carried out acts of terrorism. The Kazakh government says nearly 8,000 people have been arrested so far. Over 160 people were killed in the violence. Massive floods around South Africa's eastern coast city of East London have killed at least 10 people and left hundreds without homes since the weekend. Local media footage showed rivers bursting through banks, leaving roads inundated. It also reported that hundreds of homes had been washed away in the iron roof informal settlement just outside the city. The deadly flood comes despite the country's Department of Environment drawing up a plan for the country to adapt to climate change in 2019. The EU's climate monitoring service says the last seven years have been the hottest on record. In its annual assessment, the Copernicus Climate Change Service said 2021 have continued the unbroken warm streak since 2015. It has also found that last year was the fifth warmest on record. Methane concentration in the atmosphere more than doubled the average annual growth rate seen over the previous 17 years over the past two years. Legendary Indian playback singer Lata Mangeshkar has been hospitalized in the western city of Mumbai after testing positive for COVID-19. She's in the intensive care unit ICU of the Breach Candy Hospital. Her niece Rachana Shah confirmed the news to the media. The 92-year-old singer has recorded songs in more than 1,000 Hindi films in several languages. She's the recipient of three national film awards, the Dada Saheb Palke Award and the Bharat Ratna Award among other honors. U.S. surgeons have successfully implanted a heart from a genetically modified pig in a 57-year-old man, a medical first that could one day help solve the chronic shortage of organ donations. The historic procedure took place on Friday. While the patient's prognosis is far from certain, it represents a major milestone for animals to human transplantation. The patient has been deemed ineligible for human transplant. He is now recovering and being carefully monitored to determine how the new organ performs. Doctor said this was a breakthrough surgery and brings them one step closer to solve the organ shortage crisis. So the women in a first for the conservative kingdom have paraded their camels in a beauty pageant for the prize, Ships of the Desert. The event that formed part of the prestigious King Abdelaziz festival was previously a man-only affair. Dalia Nilfer has the full story. So the women attended the 6th edition of the King Abdulaziz Camel Festival in Aroma, some 161 km east of the capital Riyadh. The 40-day festival, which kicked off last month, is an annual Bedouin event that lures bidders from across the Gulf with a total prize money of up to 66 million US dollars. The top five in the field of about 40 participants in the women's event went home with total prize money about 260,000 US dollars. The 
camel's beauty is judged on several criteria, but the shape and size of the lips, neck and hump are the main attributes. In December, several participants were disqualified because their animals had undergone botox injections. In a parade at the event on the red sand track and rumor, women in black on horseback rode ahead of men in white robes on camels. Male musicians, some with swords, danced with the beat of drums. However, the oil-rich Gulf state adheres to its rigid interpretation of Islam, but since the rise to power of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman in 2017, some restrictions on women have been lifted as the country opens up with sweeping reforms. Dalian for SGV News Desk. Now sports news. New Zealand wrapped up the second test against Bangladesh by an innings and 117 runs with Ross Taylor taking the final wicket in a fairytale finish to square the two test series in Christchurch today. Lidon thus cracked a gallant 102 of 111 deliveries for Bangladesh but it was now nowhere near enough with the tourists dismissed in the second innings for 278 after being forced to follow on 385 runs behind. The top order put up gritty resistance in reaching 123 for three, while Lytton shared a century partnership for the sixth wicket with Nurul Hassan. The Bangladesh bowlers failed to capitalize the green wicket after winning the toss and putting New Zealand into a bat. And when Bangladesh batted the New Zealand pace pair, Trent Bolt and Team Saudi showed how to use the conditions. Jamison, who struggled with his line in the losing test won by Bangladesh by eight wicket, was much sharper in Christ church. Serbian tennis star Novak Djokovic won a court battle on Monday, allowing him to stay in Australia to play in the Australian Open. However, the Australian government may be preparing for a second set as it may threaten to cancel his visa for the second time. Shortly after the Federal Circuit Court reinstated Djokovic's visa, after officially initially decided he didn't meet the criteria for an exemption to an entry requirement that all non-citizens be Fully vaccinated, government lawyer Christopher Tran told the judge that the Minister for Immigration, Citizenship, Migrant Services and Multicultural Affairs will consider whether to exercise a personal power of cancellation. Before ending, we go to the Euro Bangla City, SATV News headlines again. Bangladesh Railway has yet to decide when trains will start carrying passengers at half capacity meeting on issue to be held soon, said Railway Minister. All bodies have been found went missing after a trawler capsized in Narangonj and Thalashari River. UNICEF has expressed grief and support in a statement regarding the fire broke out in Rohingya camp in Cox's Bazar. We are updated so far here on Eurobanga City SETV News and to know the latest news visit www.setv.tv. Stay with SETV.